Hi, everyone. Uh, it's up again. Uh, I'm Jennifer, and I'm here with my partner, Cindy. Um, thank you for tuning in. Um, today, we really wanted to talk to you a little bit about some obstacles that you might uh, feel um, preventing you from creating an estate plan. And we're going to go through five of these obstacles that uh, may be preventing you. Um, and, you know, we understand that in some cultures and families, bringing up you know, a topic about death can be quite unpleasant. Um, but today, you know, we're really going to talk you through uh, these obstacles. And uh, even though, you know, you feel like they are deterring you from creating a state plan, uh, but, you know, how do we discuss these topics without, you know, feeling like it's a deterrent uh, to you and your family? So, um, Cindy, maybe you could go with obstacle number one. So the first obstacle is the D word in conversation. No one really wants to talk about death. Um, it's it's morbid, it's sad, especially if you're gonna talk about it um, in context of either your aging parents or aging grandparents. Um, it could be very sensitive and, um, and just, you know, generally most people wanna avoid it. Um, and and it, especially in situations where it's not just aging grandparents, but also uh, grandparents or parents that are ill. So, you know, people don't like to talk about um, the, the potential, you know, results of death uh, based on these illnesses, because when you're, when you're diagnosed with something, you want to be positive and you want to make sure that, you know, the person who's sick is also staying positive. So it doesn't help to <laughs> use the word death. Um, but the solution here is to consider something that could work between your family and your culture is perhaps maybe using a euphemism for the word death, such as um, when and if something happens to me or, you know, maybe the term six feet under. This would generally help families carry out the conversation throughout the family meeting, um, take away the negative connotation of it, and maybe make it a little bit more lighthearted, um, making it easier to talk about. Uh, and then you want to break down the estate planning meeting into separate parts if it's too much at once. So maybe you can discuss um, the, the healthcare directive in one setting, and then another day you could talk about um, assets and where they could uh, potentially end up or how they should be distributed. So breaking that up in different segments and different, um, different uh, scenarios could help move along the conversation. Yeah, and then um, obstacle number two that we always kind of hear from clients is the fear that they're going to lose control. Uh, over these assets. Um, so a lot of clients are afraid that, hey, you know, once I create an estate plan, am I going to somehow not have control over these assets anymore? Um, they're also afraid of leaving money and assets to their children. Um, and then they're going to be left penniless after handing everything to their children. Um, and so the solution to that really is um, customizing um, an estate plan. Uh, to your family situation. Um, so it doesn't mean that, you know, once you create this plan, somehow, you know, you're no longer able to change it or you're no longer able to handle your assets. Um, so for a revocable living trust during your lifetime, you're still able to control your assets. You can make changes uh, during your lifetime. You can still sell your house if you wanted to. Um, so the estate plan is still within your control. Um, and, you know, a lot of times people fear that, hey, somehow if my kids know that I have this estate plan, they think they're going to take everything and uh, I'm not going to be able to change that. Um, and, and that's a myth. Um, you're still uh, in the right uh, to make those changes. You can still change your mind and not leave it to your children and, you know, give it all to charity if you wanted to. Um, so that's still all within your rights. So the control aspect is really not an obstacle. Um, you have the right to still make all those changes during your lifetime as long as you're mentally able to do so. The third problem that we often see is the fear of um, speaking to an attorney. Um, you, 
you might feel intimidated or um, not be ready or not be informed enough to speak to an attorney, but um, you know, the solution to this is to make sure that you find someone who's willing to listen to you and your situation and, and make you feel comfortable. Um, a, a lot of people fear finding an attorney who might price gouge you or, um, you know, not, not really be someone that you could, uh, that you could be honest with. So really, maybe the best way is to start with a, um, a referral from a family or a friend. So do your research, ask around, and um, if there's no personal referrals, then um, talk to a few. Talk to a few attorneys um, that you find that you can find either on Yelp or online or you know social media, or whatever. Um, and talk to a few of them. Most of them will give uh, free consultations. Our office gives free consultations, so there's absolutely no obligations after you speak to us, uh, while you speak to us, um, and just uh, speak to a few attorneys and get get the idea, get get you know get that feeling if you try to achieve that feeling of comfort with um with the attorneys and um and that should you know kind of get you started on the right path um and Cindy kind of mentioned on this it's basically the cost right so uh, a lot of people fear that it's going to be very expensive to create your own estate plan um and that's an obstacle um some people also think hey you know i'm not wealthy i don't have a lot of money um, and estate planning really is only for wealthy people. Um, and that's actually not really true. Um, I, I think wealth for many people is defined differently. So, um, you know, uh, it doesn't mean that, you know, you, you only have the house that you're living in and somehow that's really um, a small estate that you don't really need to consider making an estate plan. Um, so it's, you do need to think about, uh, you know, the estate plan is not really just for wealthy people. Um, and so, I mean, each law firm really, um, you know, has their own cost accommodation. So you really have to call around to see, you know, the cost of the firms. And, you know, once you do find an attorney that you feel comfortable with, uh, discuss the costs with them and maybe they can offer you a payment plan that works for you or some sort of discount. Uh, or a fee that you find uh, more reasonable. Um, and then you really need to think about the estate plan as an investment. Um, you know, you basically pay ahead of time some lump sum of money basically uh, for your family. It's basically saving your family time and money from going through probate court. Again, the average cost for probate in California is $34,000 uh, and can last more than a year due to the current delays from the pandemic. Um, so if you are able to, you know, you can go ahead and create your estate plan ahead of time. That saves a lot of time and money and headache uh, for your family going forward. Um, so costs really should not be too much of an obstacle as long as you can find an attorney that you're comfortable with to talk through the payment and, um, you know, find somebody that is reasonable. And um, the last problem that we often see is uh, really tough decisions. Um, that need to be made, that needs, needs to be made, but are um, delayed because they're so hard to make. So <laughs> delaying tough decisions does not make tough decisions easier. Um, tough decisions uh, such as, uh, you know, whether one grandchild has a special needs or, um, you know, the idea of your spouse remarrying or who would be in charge of everything if one spouse passes away, um, children from previous marriage, uh, perhaps one child is more successful than another and one may need more assistance. So you may feel overwhelmed by de these decisions, but uh, it, it doesn't mean that you should continue to delay them. It doesn't make them easier. So uh, a solution is to discuss the situation with an attorney. So uh, we at MA Law Firm, we've, we've seen it all. We've heard about a lot of difficult situations. So uh, there's a lot of creative solutions that we can help uh, you come up with um, based on our past experiences and based on you know, the hundreds and thousands of estate plans that we've 
um, drafted for other uh, families that may face a similar situation. Um, another solution is to make sure that you bring up these uh, difficult decisions with your family. Um, a lot of times just talking about it out in the open really helps, uh, you know, crowdsourcing ideas is not, uh, not a new concept. So it, it definitely helps when um, people know your struggles, people know the uh, difficulties you're facing and, um, and, and help you with that once they know. So, um, you know, again, we offer free consultation. So if anyone uh, is looking for assistance in uh, drafting an estate plan or looking for or have questions about an estate plan, whether it's a living trust, a will, power of attorney, healthcare directive, transferring assets to your existing estate plan, let us know. Uh, don't let these obstacles prevent you from making your first step into creating your own estate plan. Contact our office today to schedule your free consultation.